If you'd like to get stronger without straining or even feeling like you're working that hard, then this video is for you. I'll share a surprisingly effective neuroscience technique that you can use to get stronger without exerting a maximal effort. Now, let me say that this isn't the way that I train personally, but it is a technique that I've been using with my physical therapy patients for years intuitively. However, I recently learned about it on Andrew Huberman's podcast in a four hour and 15 minute interview with Pavel Sasulin. Now for context, Andrew Huberman is a neuroscientist and a professor at Stanford University, and Pavel Sasulin is a world-renowned strength coach. So these are some pretty good sources. Now, when we typically think of strength training, we think that you have to do either a heavier weight for fewer reps or a lighter weight for more reps. But in this technique, you're actually using a moderate weight for fewer reps, but doing it more often. This is based in motor learning, which is essentially meaning that you learn how to do the movement. And strength is not necessarily tied to muscle hypertrophy or muscle size. Strength is actually a skill. And you can get much stronger without developing a lot of muscle size by teaching your brain to connect with your muscles more efficiently. And in motor learning, it's been known for a long time that practicing more often is much more effective than doing large bouts of training. Pavel gave the example of studying for a test. If you were cramming the night before, you're probably not going to be as effective as if you took flashcards everywhere you went and every time you had a break, you flipped through a few flashcards and studied each time. Likewise, if you were learning a karate form, rather than doing large bouts of practice, you would learn it better if you did small bouts of practice, say every hour or two throughout the day. Now the same thing works when it comes to strength training. Instead of doing one hour in the gym and going through all of your exercises at the same time, if you were to break that up into small blocks of practice throughout the day, every day or on most days of the week, you'd be much more effective and your brain would learn to recruit your muscles faster. Now you still have to use a sufficient training load. And what that was, was 75 to 85% of your one repetition maximum, or the amount of weight that you can lift one time. What that equates to is a weight that you can do roughly seven to 16 repetitions and no more with. But here's the surprising part. If you're lifting a weight at 85% of your one repetition maximum, you would be able to do roughly seven reps. Now, instead of doing seven reps, you actually only want to do three or four. Now, the ideal way to do this would be to do that, say, every hour throughout the day with large gaps in between. That teaches your brain to come back to that learned movement habit and review it again. Now, that's not necessarily feasible, especially if you're using weights. So what he suggested instead was doing one set every 10 minutes. So you're using a weight that you can do for roughly seven repetitions, but you're only doing three or four, and you're only doing one set every 10 minutes, which means if you were at the gym for an hour, you would do roughly about six sets of three to four reps with a weight that you could do maximally seven times. Now you can actually mix other things in there. For example, if you're doing a bench press, you could also mix in a squat or potentially he said one other exercise. So you might do a squat and then rest for three minutes and then do a bench press and rest for three minutes. And then potentially if you wanted to do say a lat pull down, you could do that three minutes later and then go back to the squat and you'd have roughly 10 minutes in between your repetitions of squats. So you could potentially get three exercises for six sets with 10 minutes in between each particular exercise. Now, if you take this into a physical therapy context, I've been teaching patients to do this sort of thing for a long time. Often patients will ask me how many sets, how many reps, and I don't necessarily give them a specific answer most of the time because it doesn't necessarily matter if you do 10 reps or five reps or one set or three sets. What matters is that you're doing it often. And so typically I'll give people very few exercises, 
one, two, or three of them, but have them try to do it frequently throughout the day. An example might be doing a standing pelvic tilt whenever you're standing stationary anywhere. So if you're standing in line at the grocery store, if you're standing in the kitchen cooking dinner, if you're standing out an event, trying to do a standing pelvic tilt to position your spine in a neutral position. This isn't necessarily an exercise that you do for repetitions, but it teaches your brain to learn that new postural habit. And the more often you do it throughout the day, the more that new movement habit becomes ingrained and you do it more often. Now, another example would be standing up from a chair. Instead of doing, say, three sets of 10 of sit to stands and then doing nothing else throughout the day, it would be better to break that up into doing three or four repetitions of sit to stands every hour and doing that throughout the day, or possibly whenever you happen to be standing up, just to do that three or four times before you get on to what you're doing. This more frequent practice, even though it's lower number of repetitions each time, teaches your brain that movement pattern and that muscle activation pattern, so you become more skilled with it over time. And again, strength is a skill. So to summarize this neuroscience-based strength building technique that Pavel refers to as greasing the groove, you want to pick a weight that's 75 to 85% of your one repetition maximum, or a weight that you could possibly lift 7 to 16 times. However, you only want to do half the number of repetitions that you possibly could. So if it's a weight that you could lift 7 times, you only want to do 3 to 4 repetitions, and then doing that as often throughout the day as you can. Or if you have to fit it into the context of a gym workout, allowing at least 10 minutes of rest in between sets. And then you want to do this as often throughout the week as you can. Ideally, doing it every day if you don't get too fatigued or training two to three days in a row and then taking one day rest in between. So hopefully you did find this helpful. If you'd like more strength training techniques, check out this video over here. But before you go, if you found this one helpful, make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future tips. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.